Welcome to this video about choosing the perfect word. My name is Martin Rittman from the English Editing Department here at MDPI. And this is the fourth uh, and final one in our series of videos. So we started looking off at, uh, started off looking at uh, the background, what to think about before you start writing. Then we looked at paragraph structure, sentence structure, and now we're kind of zooming on, uh, zooming into single words. So hopefully um, this video will help you choose the right words. And there's a phrase in English that says there's more than one way to skin a cat. In other words, you know, you can choose more than one word uh, when, you're, when you're writing something. So it might help you choose the right word, the correct word, the best word, the most appropriate word. There's a slight difference in the meaning of each of these four examples, but any of them are equally valid. Uh, and it might depend a little bit on the context as to which, which one you choose. So I'm going to start giving you some general principles, then we're going to look at three examples, uh, and finally a few more pieces of final advice. So the first principle, um, which I've, I've mentioned before, is just to keep things simple. Remember your writing is not about showing off, it's about communicating the message that you want to, to give to your readers as clearly as possible. Uh, and when you're looking at individual words, a really good question to ask is, is that word or phrase necessary? And we're going to see in the examples, sometimes you can remove words or phrases and it helps make your writing clearer and gets your message ac across better. When I'm editing my own work, I usually find that by the time I finish the process, it's shorter than when I started because I've taken out uh, unnecessary repetitive phrases. It's really important to think about your audience. Um, and, uh, you know, are you, are you writing for a general audience or are you writing for, uh, for specialists within your field? Um, if you're not sure, even when you're writing research papers, I would really recommend that you think more broadly than, than people who are really very familiar with your work because the audience might be broader than you expect. And remember that you're trying to make a connection with the readers and that means they need to understand the vocabulary you're using. Now, jargon is obviously quite common within uh, scientific writing. Um, and it can be really useful sometimes when you want to explain something very precisely. But make sure that your readers know the jargon that you're using. And if you're in doubt, then explain it the first time that you use it. Clarity um, is obviously very important. And you can ask the question, who's kicking whom? So that means when, you're, uh, w when you write a sentence, is it clear who's doing uh, which part of the, of the actions described in the sentence? Are the subjects and objects uh, clear? Also think about using concrete nouns and vivid verbs. Why? Well, it helps to create uh, an image in the mind of your, your readers. If you use lots of abstract words and abstract concepts, your readers might have to work hard to really understand um, what's going on. If you, if you can use uh, words that are related to real physical concepts, um, it will help them to, to better imagine in, in their heads what you're trying to describe. So here's our first example. So the Archaea fraction was uniform in seasons and sites and showed no specific preferences to physico-chemical predictors. So, I mean, this is okay. We can kind of understand what the what the readers, you know, what the authors intended. But there's a few words here that I think could be improved a little bit. So, firstly, in season has a quite a specific meaning in English, and it's it's not what the authors intended here. We've got and repeated in the middle of of the sentence, which is quite often confusing. Uh, and I have a a bit of an issue with. Um, with archaea showing preferences. They're not really anim uh, animate beings um, that made a decision about which physico-chemical predictors. So I think we can use something a little bit more simple here. So this is my suggestion. So I've changed in seasons to across seasons. Um, I've replaced the second and here. Just put a comma and saying showing no specific differences. And I've um, uh, I've changed this uh, this preferences to differences between physico-chemical predictors. 
So here's another example. So this breakdown was carried out at different environmental conditions and the fragments were allowed to self-organize at these temperatures. So again, it's fairly clear what the authors are trying to say, but I think there's a few words that we can change that could in improve um, the writing. So firstly, we've got environmental conditions, which refers to a whole range of things. It can refer to you know, pressure, temperature, humidity, and so on, but we actually mean temperatures. The, bra the, the 37 and 50 degrees C in brackets really indicates this. So let's be more specific there. And then we also mention temperatures at the end of the sentence. So maybe we can ask whether we really need to mention it twice. Um, and then we also you know, maybe take a little bit of issue with the fragments being allowed to do something. We're not specifically giving them permission to do so. I mean, maybe I'm, I'm being a, a little bit too, uh, uh, too judgmental here because this is a fairly commonly used phrase. But let's see how we can phrase it differently. So here's my first effort, which is, you know, this breakdown was carried out at different temperatures after which the fragment self-organized. So now it's much simpler. We mentioned temperatures once. Uh, and instead of allowing the fragments to self-organize, uh, we just say after which they self-organized. Now, I edited this and then realized there's a slight problem because it's then not clear at which temperatures they self-organized. So I thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rephrase it a little bit and let's stick the temperatures at, at the beginning. So at different temperatures, 37 and 50 degrees C, the breakdown was carried out and the fragments left to self-organize. So we've now actually gone back to modify the sentence structure a little bit, taken out some of the words, uh, and hopefully it's a little bit clearer what's going on. So here's another example. In summary, a fuzzy partition of the proposed TS fuzzy model, a novel variable length tree seed algorithm based competitive agglomeration VTSACA algorithm is presented to determine the optimal number of clusters automatically and improve the fuzzy clustering performances. Now, if you understand this the first time you see it, you're certainly doing a lot better than me. Let's try to understand why this sentence is difficult to understand. And I think one of the reason is, reasons is that there's a lot of abstract words here. So pro pro proposed, presented, determined, improved. These are not really words that, that immediately paint a picture in your mind. And then we've also got some repetition. Um, you know, we've, we've got a massive subclause in the middle here, we're starting with a fuzzy partition. And then at the end, we've got a you know, number of clusters automatically and fuzzy clustering performances. So with this phrase, number of clusters automatically, I mean, it's obvious that we're talking about clustering performance because this is mentioned afterwards. And automatically is also quite obvious because it's an algorithm. So I think we can take this phrase out. So here's, here's how I re-edited this sentence. So instead of proposing, I'm going to put forward. So you might think this is a little bit informal for, for scientific writing, but it's something that paints a picture in the reader's mind um, that they can, you know, really visualize something um, um, being proposed in this way. So we put forward a fuzzy partition of the TS fuzzy model, a novel variable length tree seed algorithm based competitive um, agglomeration algorithm. And then all you really want to say is it improves on fuzzy clustering methods. So rather than this, you know, is presented to determine the optimal number of clusters automatically and improve the blah, blah, we can just say it improves on fuzzy clustering methods. Let's, let's say something really simple, put it in one sentence that's separate from the previous sentence, and hopefully it's now a lot eas more easy to understand. So a few bits of final advice. What I mentioned several times is that you should look to paint a picture. And sometimes you should do this literally. Maybe a figure or a table with information in can help rather than um, a, whole, uh, a whole paragraph or several paragraphs of prose. Um, you may have received advice about using the passive voice. Um, which is uh, when, you know, for example, in the second sentence here, it doesn't have to be avoided. It doesn't really say who's um, doing the avoiding in this sentence. Well, you don't have to use it. You don't have to not use it. Um, but just think about the clarity of your 
of your writing and decide what's most appropriate for the situation that you're that you're writing in be precise i mean this is this is really important especially in in scientific writing um, and uh, if you can't find the right word then go back to look at the sentence structure and i think you'll have seen this a couple of times in the examples above that actually i while changing the words i also rearranged the sentence structure at the same time and you might find this particularly if you're translating from a different language, um, that something which works well in another language won't directly translate into English. And it may be that you want to um, swap around the sentence structure uh, and express things in a slightly different way uh, in order to, uh, to really convey your message in the best possible sense. So a reminder that this series of videos has been sponsored by English Editing at MDPI. Um, we provide fast, accurate in English editing by native English speakers uh, and you can find further information at the URL in the middle of the page. And I wish you all the best with your own writing. Uh, thanks for your attention.